Hi, everybody. Welcome to Impact Catalyst. I'm Karen Chasson, and my guest today is Ashley Richmond, who is the director of the nonprofit Help Us Gather. Um, she's going to talk about the mission of this organization that I think you're all going to be excited to hear about and some of their upcoming initiatives. Ashley, hi, welcome. Thanks for having me, Karen. I appreciate it. Yeah. So tell us about Help Us Gather. Absolutely. Help Us Gather is part of a 501c3 nonprofit, and the mission of Help Us Gather or HUG is to advocate for inclusion and connect people with disabilities to social events. HUG started a handful of years ago when our founder, Robin Lally, her brother moved here to the area, and um, she always talks about how it was fairly easy to get him set up with housing and uh, help with finding a job, but getting him friendships and finding him social outlets was a challenge. There are lots of amazing programs in our community, but it takes a lot of work to find them. And so Hug was originally created as a website to publish and share events for children, teens, and adults with disabilities and act as a one-stop shop. So caregivers and um, people, family members and people with disabilities don't have to spend hours researching um, because they simply just don't have hours to spend. So we um, right now share events and programs with more than 85 partner organizations. And the other arm of HUG is uh, advocacy and inclusion. It's really important that we're making sure people in the community accept and welcome and include our friends with disabilities because we believe that no one should be sentenced to a life of isolation and loneliness simply because they have a disability. That's wonderful. You know, remind me, um, Ms. Lolly's brother had autism. Is that correct? Is that yes, or yes. Has, has autism? So that suggests that there's a spectrum of disabilities and you're, you're inclusive of any and all varieties. Is that correct? Absolutely. Yes. We share events for all ages, any disability, um, intellectual or physical disabilities, because we understand that everybody has a need in this in this community and in this world for social connections. We've done a lot of research into how important social connections are. Um, even before the pandemic, when we all learned firsthand how it feels to be isolated. Um, but one study actually showed that chronic and regular social isolation leads to depression and can be worse for your health than regularly smoking. Wow. So we know that this has a huge impact on not only people's emotional health, but their physical health as well. So it's important that all people and people with disabilities have an opportunity to have those social outlets to build those important life friendships and to feel loved and welcomed in our community. Must be so rewarding to watch those connections take shape and the impact impact they have on people. Wonderful. It's beautiful. I, I, I talk all the time about how um, when we have a new family that comes in, um, a lot of times they're really at the end of their rope and you can see it in their faces on the can hear it in their voices. And a lot of people who come to us are really lonely and have been for years. And then they go to a couple of events, they get involved with one program, maybe two, and you see it, you know, they light up again and they have something to look forward to and a reason to feel valued in our community. And that is beautiful. I know we're going to get, move on to your uh, mobility mat initiative, which is pretty fascinating in a second, but how can people get involved? I saw something on your website about ambassadors. What is, what is that role? And tell us if, if you know, you'd be interested in people listening to this broadcast to get involved. Well, so we are always looking for volunteers and new ways to partner in the community. Um, we also host our own events um, with our friends of Hug Social Group once a month. Um, but Hug Ambassadors are our Hug friends who serve an important role. They go out into the community and tell people about Hug, especially once they've been to a few events and they know firsthand how it is. They um, act as our walking billboards to talk about Hug, why it's amazing, and to get more people involved. Because even though we have hundreds of members, you know, there are thousands of people in the Tampa Bay area alone with disabilities who may not even know HUG exists. So awareness is still a really important branch of outreach and our HUG ambassadors fill an important role. And that's honestly how we get the majority of our new HUG friends and um, event attendees and people on our website is through word of mouth. Very cool. Very cool. Um, okay. So I want to hear about the mobility mats and the kind of special kind of inclusion that they um, afford. 
Absolutely. Just a couple of statistics that a lot of people are surprised by. Um, one in four adults in the United States has some form of disability, and that's even higher. 28% of adults in Florida live with a disability, according to the CDC. So that's more than one in four people in our community who have some form of disability. And one in seven adults has a mobility challenge. So that's not just wheelchair users, but anyone who has a broken limb or a prosthetic limb. Um, and that's who we're trying to serve with our Mobility Mats initiative. Right now in Pinellas County, we only know of four mobility mats that help people access the beach. But imagine trying to get through the sand in a wheelchair or, you know, with a prosthetic limb. It's for a lot of our friends with disabilities, it's incredibly difficult it's or simply area. impossible. What mm -hmm. is the map? Tell me exactly how it, how it works. So the mobility mat is a non-slip surface. It's not permanent, um, but a lot of communities choose to leave them out for the majority of, of the year um, unless there's a storm coming. And it helps provide a flat, even surface for anyone with a mobility mat or excuse me, anyone with a mobility challenge to access the beach. So we've seen firsthand how incredible they are for especially our friends in power chairs who a lot of them feel like the beach isn't a place for them. And we we believe that our beautiful natural resources here in Florida should be accessible to everyone. Why shouldn't someone with a disability have the option to get out onto the beach, enjoy being out there with friends and family? Why should they have to be limited to the sidewalk when we know this technology exists and it's pretty affordable? Is it a pretty recent invention or have they been around for a while? I think they've been around for a while. Um, according to uh, a popular brand called Moby Mat, there are about 30 parks and beaches in Florida that have a Moby Mat installed. But when we think about how many beaches are in Florida, 30 really is not much. So our goal is, especially here since we're based in Clearwater, we want the entire Tampa Bay area to be known as one of the to be known as the most inclusive city in the nation. And that starts with making our beaches accessible. So how are you fundraising for this? Tell me, tell me how you're financing these investments. Well, Hug has been very lucky that we've partnered with a private foundation, the Ford Foundation. They've offered to fund any mobility mat in the area. Any city that wants one can get one. So it's an incredible offer. One of the cornerstones of the Ford Foundation is human equality. And that's exactly what this initiative serves. It makes sure that we all have the ability to enjoy this beautiful natural resource. So that's an incredible part of this project that we're really excited about is that any beach facing city in our area that wants one can get one. So how does the city come to you? How, how do you pursue the, the transaction? So that's a little bit um, where it's a lot of steps. So a city will um, identify a beach that works for them. A lot of cities will have their city engineer or hire a private engineer to draw up the plans of where the mobility map can go. And then once they are approved for a permit from the FDEP and the Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission. Then the Ford Foundation will write a check to the city to purchase the mat and install it. Wow, that's pretty exciting. Are you looking for private support for, for any of your work? Absolutely, yes. We are always looking for private support. And a lot of these mobility mats, are they range in price from about $4,000 to $20,000. So there's a lot of flexibility for other organizations to partner with us and even purchase a mat and have their name, have their logo on the sign and be part of this project. Because we're, we want everyone in this community to be inclusive and welcoming. So we would never say no to another organization or um, our donor that wants to partner with this project. Right. Okay. But today's mission is for you to be getting the word out to any Florida city with a beach. This is something to consider and get in touch with Hug to, to explore how to, how to make it happen. Is that correct? Absolutely. Right now we're working on almost two dozen beaches that we've identified in the Pinellas County and Pasco County area that we know are, are in the works or have at least been identified that are potential for mobility mat. Um, right now, we've only heard from one city that has gotten their permit approved from the state, um, and that's the city of Madeira Beach. Okay. So in a few weeks, we're hoping to have our first ribbon cutting on our first uh, forward foundation and hug advocate um, advocacy mobility mat. So we are really excited for that, and, um, and we want that to be the first of many. Exciting. If people go onto your website, are they going to get a glimpse of how these things work? So 
So we have two different websites dedicated to this. Um, helpusgather.org slash mobility mats talks a lot about our initiative and why we are so passionate about this. And then we've also started helpusgather.org slash accessible beaches because we realized throughout the course of this process that even beaches in our area that have a mobility mat, a lot of people don't know about. We even have some hug families who had no idea there was a mobility mat in Indian Rocks Beach. We had no clue and they live blocks away. We work about seven minutes away. <laughs> so we want to make sure not only are we funding these mats and making them happen, but making sure people know about them. So that's what the Accessible Beaches website is for. We're doing the legwork. We're visiting these beaches in person, checking out the mats, making sure visitors know about accessible parking, um, restrooms ahead of time, how long the mobility mat is and how wide. So providing all of that information to make sure anyone who lives in our area or who's visiting our area knows about the mobility mats and knows how to access them. Wonderful. Um, as we wrap up here, is there anything else you would like people to know about HUG? Any any uh, upcoming events, fundraisers? Um, ribbon cutting sounds pretty exciting. I would imagine you'll be sharing the word on that when it happens. Yes, absolutely. And I know a lot of times our, our local mayors have been amazing with this project and they want to see this happen. So the biggest thing that we can do is have people in the community advocating for this project, letting their city leaders know they want it to happen and letting our state leaders know as well. That's a really important part of looping everyone in on this and making sure we're all on the same page, especially since we do have that private funding source. There's, we're hoping there's no way to say no. Well, congratulations on landing a funding source with a national funder like the Ford Foundation. That's quite remarkable. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes, it's very exciting. Thanks so much for being with us today. And we wish you all the best with your work. Thank you, Karen. I appreciate it. Take care.